And it's uh, Tilo Yankee for a Romeo a golf ball. Uh, the uh, name is Robert uh, Romeo Oscar Bravo Echo Romeo Tango and TTH Albany, Georgia in US State, Georgia. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now in this video we'll take a look at the Moonraker Fire Spot. Now most of you will be familiar with digital hotspots that you can run in the comfort of your own home or even mobile, which gives the user access to all digital modes and reflectors. So if you're not in reach of a digital repeater, then a digital hotspot will solve that problem by providing RF access to those networks. So why has Moonraker decided to make their own digital hotspot, considering there are already many on the market? Now, before we answer that question, let's take a look what comes with the fire spot. So first up is the USB cable, which is used to power the fire spot. You will, however, need to provide your own power supply. Something like a mobile phone charger with a one amp rating or higher would be most suited. I think most people will have something like that knocking around. Next, we have the little antenna, which attaches to the SMA connector on top of the fire spot. Now this antenna supports UHF, as does the internal radio modem. Of course, you can use your own antenna if desired and just connect it to the SMA connector. Now, a USB Wi-Fi adapter is also included and this supports 2G and 5G Wi-Fi networks and works perfectly with the FireSpot. So the FireSpot itself comes packaged in a nice sturdy 3D printed case. Now, according to the website, colors may vary, but mine came with an orange top and a red base. I guess colors don't really matter with a product like this, it's how it works that counts. Now you'll also notice on top there's a small window, which an OLED screen shows through. Now this will provide connection details once powered up and connected to the network. Now one side of the FireSpot hosts an Ethernet connection, which can be used to connect the FireSpot to your home network, or you can use the supplied Wi-Fi adapter and plug it into the USB port, which is next to the Ethernet port. At the other side of the fire spot, we find a USB connection, which is used for powering and next to this slot, a micro SD card. Now the fire spot comes with a preloaded SD card and it will already be installed. So no messing around trying to find an SD card and imaging it. Now, even though the SD card is preloaded, there is some small configuration we need to perform, which I'll go through shortly. Now to answer that question of why, well, it's simple. Nearly all MMDVM hotspots run from a Raspberry Pi, which is a single board computer. However, the current state of the market means either over inflated prices for old stock or Raspberry Pis are simply not obtainable. So the fire spot runs on the Orange Pi. Now the Orange Pi is a single board computer and fully supports MMDVM and Pi style. In fact, Orange Pi has greater specs, which can beat some of the Raspberry Pi models. This means faster boot times and greater performance. So let's take a look at how we configure the Fire Spot from Moonmaker. On their website, they do have a downloadable guide which you can follow and go through. It's quite easy, so let's just go through the steps now. First thing to do will be to attach the Ethernet cable between your home Wi Fi router and the Fire Spot. Then locate a power supply, something like a mobile phone charger, and then use the supplied USB cable to plug between the power source and the FireSpot small USB connection. Now load up a browser on a computer which is on the same network as your FireSpot and type http colon forward slash forward slash pi dash star dot local into the address bar. Now this may take a few attempts while the FireSpot performs its first boot and connects to the network. Eventually, you will see the PyStar dashboard load into the browser. So you can now go ahead and make the changes that you need to get it working. If you want to use the FireSpot over Wi-Fi, then now is the time to configure this. Shut down the FireSpot using the shutdown button on the dashboard. Once shut down, unplug the power and then insert the Wi-Fi dongle into the USB socket, which is next to the ethernet connection. Then power on the fire spot with the ethernet cable still attached. Now once booted, go to the admin page and scroll down to the bottom. Here you can scan for available wireless networks and then enter the correct password and then save and connect. 
Once done, you can shut down, remove the ethernet cable and then power back on. The Fire Sport should then be accessible in the same way, but it'll be using the Wi-Fi instead of ethernet. The wireless configuration area is also where you would configure things like mobile hotspots. So if you wanted to tether your Fire Sport to your mobile device for internet, then you'd add that profile there. Now, once you have the network configured, then it's time to start entering some unique details. For this, you'll need at least your call sign and your DMR ID. Now, if you do not have a DMR ID, then head to the Radio ID website and apply for a DMR ID. Now, the DMR ID helps with user identification on a few of the digital networks. Another important setting is the radio frequency. Now, this will be the simplex frequency that you will use on your radio to talk to and listen to the fire spot. Other information like latitude, longitude, your town and country can also be entered, but this information will not stop the fire spot from working. The last option to choose would be which digital mode you want to use. If we scroll up to the section above, we can turn on or off certain digital modes. Obviously, you only want to turn on the modes which you have radios for. So as a test, I will just enable YSF mode, which uses Yesu's C4FM digital mode. And once enabled, I'm then able to change which reflector the fire spot is connected to. In this test, I will first connect to the parrot, which is a reflector that plays back any transmissions that it receives. Now, this is a good test to make sure your radio is set up correctly. This is M0DQW testing, M0DQW testing. This is M0DQW testing, M0DQW testing the YSF parrot, M0DQW testing the YSF parrot. This is M0DQW, M0DQW, testing the YSF parrot, YSF parrot through the fire spot, Mike Zero Delta Quebec whiskey testing. This is M0DQW, M0DQW, testing the YSF parrot, YSF parrot through the fire spot, Mike Zero Delta Quebec whiskey testing. Now changing reflectors is quite easy. Just select another reflector from the drop down list. Now this time I'll select Hubnet and then click on request change. After a few seconds, the reflector will change and you'll start to hear any activity if there is any. Uh, portable, which I uh, usually use, um, but uh, today I'm buzzing about the Lake District in, uh, in a, a little Mercedes truck, and uh, I just thought that I'd, uh, I'd set up an Echo Link and just see how it works, and it seems to be working well. Uh, so yeah, great to meet you, Les, and um, I'll put it back to you for a final, and then I'll, uh, I'll carry on with my uh, gentle uh, wanderings up to the lakes. Um, Mike 7 JHV mobile back to 2 Echo Zero LRV back to you guys. Now the Firespot also supports other digital modes like D-Star, DMR, P25 and NXDN. Showing how to configure all of these modes is a little outside the scope of this video. However, one more demonstration would be DMR. Now DMR has two types of servers available with Brandmeister being the most popular. After setting DMR enabled within MMDVM configuration, you'll then need to choose which server you want to connect to. If you're using a Brandmeister server, then it's best to also create an account on the Brandmeister website. There you can create a hotspot password, which you'll need to enter into the hotspot under the DMR section. Now this allows your hotspot to be controlled by your account on the Brandmeister network for setting up things like dynamic or static talk groups. You can even generate API keys and link them onto your hotspot within the expert panel of PyStar.
With DMR and Brandmeister, you use the radio to change reflectors, or otherwise known as talk groups on DMR. Now, my handheld radio has a few talk groups programmed in. You'll also need to make sure you're on the correct time slot and color code that the hotspot has been programmed to. Now, this is all user changeable if required. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, M0 DQW. As mentioned earlier, the Firespot also has a small OLED, which displays information about the service that it's connected to and the call sign of the current person talking if available. Well, there we go, guys, the Moonraker Firespot, a great introduction to digital radio hotspots without using the very hard to get Raspberry Pis. I will leave a link in the description of where to purchase. And don't forget, they do ship worldwide. Until the next video, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.